The following disclaimer is for people living outside the United States of America who may not understand that the Bureau of Land Management is a United States government organization primarily involved in taking over the control of privately owned farming and ranch land across the United States. It began its mission in the early 1900s and has become known lovingly by farming and ranch land owners in the United States as the BLM. Well, howdy, partners. This is Michael Sean. Pull up a seat here at our campfire. Information that I read from Bob Kenford the other day put a grin on my face. Just doggone near any rancher or cowboy who has had as much contact as any of us have with the Bureau of Land Management can tell you that the initials BLM are actually a top secret government code for Bureau of Lost Mines. <sighs> In New Mexico, for instance, the BLM has undertaken a wilderness study to determine if a certain area should be proclaimed wilderness. Now, if you and I was going to study this little piece of so-called wilderness, it wouldn't take us long to find the area littered with beer cans, not to mention it includes a number of, well, let's just call them abandoned homesteads. One section of land was used during World War II as a practice bombing range. Now, I'll have to admit that there are abundant deer and elk, but that's because deer and elk become abundant pretty quickly. But there's a certain government big game specialist who was counting those deer, and he told me that there were so few deer that he hadn't seen one in six weeks. Well, all I had to do was drive my pickup a ways up the Jeep trail, and I would see six or eight or a dozen deer all at once. These deer and elk had plenty of water to drink, you see. I guess man made ponds and wells and water lines and bomb craters commonly found in pristine wilderness areas provide for that. I nearly applied for a job as a wild horse wrangler for the BLM. At the time, I was actually staying at a comfortable tent site for a few weeks in the beautiful land of enchantment. I started filling out the application. It was multiple choice. Do you have a name? Yes, no, or maybe. It was like a test that all cowboys take to graduate from high school. Can you saddle a horse? A. I can accomplish the task with little or no difficulty. B. With some difficulty, I can accomplish the task. Or C. I cannot accomplish the task. Or D. With close supervision, I could possibly complete the task. Or E. I'm considered a journeyman in this area, and people often ask me for advice in this matter. Well, this is actually a question from the application. Now, aside from the fact that I never have been anywhere that a cowboy didn't know how to saddle a horse, the BLM left out the most important answer. That's F. It depends on the horse. <laughs> then I came to the trick questions. Can you use or maintain a screwdriver? Can you sleep outdoors in a tent? Well, I thought again, only if I used and maintained too many screwdrivers during the day could I fall asleep with my feet sticking out of the tent. Well, you see, I told my buddy, as great protectors of the wilderness goes, I'm probably not the material that the BLM is looking for. I started a campfire. I used the application for Kenlin and... I maintained a few screwdrivers and fell asleep with my feet outside the tent. I'm Michael Sean. Put another log on the fire here at the campfire. Seven. Start the clock. Six. Stand by, Eddie Bay One. Five. Stand by, Sweetie Pie. Four. Bring Studio Mike's hot. Three. Stand by, Michael Sean. Two. Roll music. One. Well, howdy, y'all. The Free Range Texan podcast is underway. This here program is a special look at the way life is shaping up for folks in the U.S. of A. 
seen through the eyes of a born and bred West Texan. Our host is a veteran broadcaster who is known for his campfire visits on radio. Michael Sean is standing by. Stand by Michael Sean. So here he is, our host, a real free range Texan himself, Michael Sean. Well, hello everyone. Just got to tell you that I'm sitting here with a big grin on my face. The podcast has been in development for months, and the lights are coming on as we speak. You and I have so many things to discuss. Like, for instance, when I was asked by the folks at 18PR to host the Free Range Texan, I had two responses. First, I said, heck yeah. And second, I told them that the only thing that I needed in the form of special props and studio sets would, of course, be a campfire. I'm thinking that nobody would want to book Michael Sean to host a program and expect him to do the show without a campfire. Well, as soon as they heard me raise the whole campfire issue, it was decided that no Free Range Texan podcast would be complete without a trip to Michael Sean's campfire. Now, for those of you who have not experienced one of our planet's truly pleasurable experiences, uh, sitting at a campfire, that is, then hear me now and believe me later, because the last segment of our show, you and I are going to go out and sit by the campfire. I'll let you in on a little secret. The campfire portion of our weekly podcast is probably going to be one of your favorite parts of the Free Range Texan program. And one thing I think you'll notice is that no two campfire segments are alike. Now, continuing on our program here, let me point out that we have some spare no expense, special effects, and talented people on this program. Now, let me give you an example of that. We have an in-studio band that is part of the show. In fact, the guys are setting up over there right now. This is their first show, and uh, uh, they were asking me some questions about the show, like how should they dress for podcasting? They are the crystal clear Rio Grande Mariachi Band. They are definitely one of my favorites. If you guys will, go ahead and tune up over there a little bit, and let's have a little marimba music here for this next segment coming up there. Oh, oh, that's beautiful, guys. Just another example of the high level of sophisticated production on this show. Meanwhile, Back at the ranch, the folks at our studio tell me the customers at a California eatery are the first in the nation to buy a burger totally made by a robot. On June 27th, the world's first robot-crafted burger rolled off a conveyor belt in San Francisco, wouldn't you know it, and into the hands of hungry public. Seems that the product from a Bay Area-based creator, a culinary robotics company, is assembled and cooked in a machine that contains 20 computers, 350 sensors, and 50 actuator mechanisms. It does everything from slicing and toasting the bun to adding toppings to order and seasoning and cooking the patties all in five minutes. And in San Francisco, the minimum wage has risen to $15 an hour on July 1st of this year. Robots taking jobs could soon be a reality in many sectors if government has its way by raising the costs of labor through higher minimum wages and taxes. Interestingly, these government policies benefit higher wage workers who create and maintain the robots, while lower wage workers lose their jobs. Excuse me? Uh, just a minute, folks. Uh-huh. I, okay. 
What has just been pointed out to me is that it'll be fun to see the burgers being raised at ranches and produce farms being run by robots, because the bottom line is deciding we don't need humans, after all, in the mix. Humans, like farmers, or ranchers, or butchers, or restaurant cooks, anymore. Or the businesses or industries that earn their living by supporting producers. Then it all leaves one really interesting question. Who's gonna buy the burgers? Thank you. And besides all that, to tell you the truth, amigos, I'm pretty sure that out here in God's country, that dog ain't gonna hunt anyway. (laughs) If you know what I mean. But just in case, uh, make mine a double meat cheeseburger with jalapenos. (laughs) Please. Thanks. Well, as we begin to gear up for the Free Range Texan, one of the first things that I noticed, Free Range Texan has no borders. Now, what that means is, wherever you are, whatever you do, wherever you live and work, you can be a Free Range Texan anytime you like. Well, we say we have no borders, but uh, there are a couple of borders that we pay attention to here. The borders that we recognize are like the Red River or the Rio Grande. But I say that with a grin on my face because we find that human beings and a few animals enjoy campfires everywhere in the world. Expressing your opinion on our website, Our heroes and heroines file are things that people appreciate everywhere. Our podcast gives us the opportunity for you to go to freerangetexan.net and there will be the blog. You'll have opinions and when you do, we'd like to know what they are. Good, bad, indifferent. At the very least, Sweetie Pie is going to be reading and looking at everything that comes in. And as always, we not only want to know what you think, your thoughts, your opinions, but your show ideas or your nominations for our Heroes and Heroines file. That website again is freerangetexan.net. It's beginning to flesh out. Oh, you don't have to make a note of that necessarily. Sweetie Pie will mention it a couple of times more by the end of the show. Our producers have come up with a segment that you can be looking forward to. It's entitled Heroes and Heroines File. I mentioned that a while ago. When we go to our Heroes and Heroines File, we'll be listening to stories and interviews about famous people and not-so-famous people with fascinating stories to tell. And this is where you come in. All of us have our heroes and heroines in our life. And we think it's about time that they got a little bit of credit. If you know someone who we should be talking about, or better yet, talking to, then go to our website and share the info with us. We'd like to know about your heroes and heroines. Well, 
Well, I'm certain by now you've figured out that on this particular edition of our podcast, we're spending a lot of time talking about what's coming up on future podcasts. We have specific shows and interviews interviewing people who are experts in their fields on subjects like giants. Did you know giants walked the earth? We'll have a guest that thinks he can prove it. We're going to talk about UFOs and Bigfoot, the other kind of giants. There is a creature called Mothman, and there are people who swear Mothman is real. And of course, folks in Texas know about the Chupacabra. We'll bring you up to date. And on our Heroes and Heroines file, we have been in contact with a gentleman by the name of Roger Dykes. I think you will find him most interesting. It's going to be a fun and interesting time on the Free Range Texan. Oh, yes, and by the way, we have a couple of more things we're going to talk about. And then coming up, Michael Sean's Campfire. And the story that we're going to feature on Michael Sean's Campfire is, for the most part, true. Have you tried to hire vocal talent from a studio capable of delivering the polished professional sound for corporate presentations, commercials, or even phone answering systems? It can be a little bit pricey. A Team PR is probably who you're looking for. Producing broadcast quality products with talented vocal artists that produce in a creative digital environment. Located in Texas, not a union shop. What that means is less overhead with the production talent and quality that you're looking for. Thinking about producing your own radio syndicated show or podcast? Let 18PR provide the production and post edit support that you may need. Now, you can take my word for it because, after all, among other things, ATPR produces this podcast. Or see for yourself. Find out more about ATPR on our website at freerangetexan.net. Oh, oh, yes, and tell them Michael sent you. Hi, this is Michael Sean. Welcome to the campfire. Put another log on and listen up. This one is close to my heart. This story takes place out in some country known as the Arizona Strip. It's wild, and then some. I was just a young teenage sputter, but I can remember it like it was yesterday. In the higher elevations of the Arizona Strip, a fella can find himself riding into the Rocky Mountain gorges lined with spruce and pine trees. Most trails through these mountain passes narrow down to a single path, just wide enough for my horse, Lucky, and one of the more obstinate pack animals that I've ever spent a three-day ride with. His name was Hobby, and he was half Shetland and mostly just a pony with a bad attitude. We had been climbing through the entire morning, and it occurred to me that I was way past yonder to the point that I wouldn't be running into any other living soul on his trail. Off to my left, I heard the welcome sound of a mountain stream cutting through the canyon below me. It occurred to me that I was at a spot that I could tie my horses and easily climb down through the forest for about 50 yards or so and access the mountain stream, refill my canteens, and easily be able to climb back up the mountainside to where my horses would be waiting. I climbed down to the roaring stream, about 12 to 16 feet across, right at the top of a waterfall that cascaded down 40 or 50 feet or so over the rocks. I crouched down at the edge of the water and opened my canteen. One I slung around my knee and the other I reached down and pushed it under the water. 
The strap on the other canteen slipped off my knee, and before I could grab it, it went over the waterfall. I stood up and watched it get hung up on the rocks 50 feet below me. So now, it occurs to me that I could climb down further and retrieve my canteen, which I really didn't want to be without the next two and a half days. I threw the already filled canteen over my shoulder and climbed over the rocky ledges that led to the bottom of the waterfall. And when you're about 17 years old, folks, 10 foot tall and bulletproof, you naturally figure that you can just climb right out of whatever you wind up climbing into. And so it wasn't but a few minutes later that I was at the bottom of the gorge, bending down to pick up my empty canteen. As I leaned over, I heard a rustle in the bushes only yards downstream from where I was standing. Immediately, I began to think about bears and wolves and hosts of other critters that might be thinking that this young cowboy was in a position not favorable to a quick getaway. Slowly, I stood up. I watched the brush downstream, and there it was. The biggest mountain lion cat I had ever seen before or since. Now, honestly, friends, two voices rang out in my head. One said, hold your ground. And the other said, you need to be running like a spotted ape. The big cat took another two or three steps and didn't seem to be hesitating at all. I dropped the empty canteen and turned, and with every ounce of strength and adrenaline that this young cowboy could muster, I began to climb that mountainside with everything I had in me. Now, honestly, amigos, that cat bound two or three times, and I felt something clamp down from behind on my right foot, and that 150-pound mountain lion began pulling my leg, just like I'm pulling yours. I'm Michael Sean. I love it when we do that. Welcome to the campfire, y'all. Adios, my friends. Y'all been listening to the Free Range Texan podcast with worldwide members of the herd riding in each week. If you'd like more information about our show or where to find the products we talked about on Free Range Texan, visit our website at freerangetexan.net. That's freerangetexan.net. Free Range Texan is produced out yonder at 18 PR Studios. Speaking for Michael Sean and the rest of our crew, this is Sweetie Pie, and we'll see you next time on the Free Range Texan Podcast.